we had a nice successful morning in the straits today managed to catch a couple barrows so we we kept one for the table um, I'll just give you a quick run through of how I like to fill them um, yeah everyone's got a bit of a personal preference how they do it but this is how I do it so basically I start with the fish orientated in that position get your knife try and start underneath the scales Cut him up high in his shoulders as best you can. Okay, now then from there what I do is just with the tip of the blade, just basically you're just cutting through the skin and the scales and you can feel the bones all the way down. This cut here will make your life a lot easier in a minute. Okay, you can feel it hitting the backbone there. All the way down, clean your knife. Okay, whenever you're making your cuts on the fish, you want to angle the blade in a downward position so you, you, you're running along the bones and the backbone. You don't want to have it straighter up because you'll lose a lot of that meat. Okay, so from there, what I've done basically, I've just cut the, the skin as you can see, and then that now allows you just to make nice cuts following that backbone. You can see the see the bones getting exposed there. Okay, so you can get to the bone. So you can see that's to the backbone on that side. So then what I do, spinning back around towards you. I cut it a bit high because that's all rib cage anyway, and I like to cut the um, bellies out. So I might show you that later as well. So I just cut down till you get back to his anal. And same again, just little cuts following the fins until you get to where you started. Being careful not to cut your hand because you're cutting towards yourself. Once again, just doing little cuts. I'll get him down here so he doesn't slide too much. Okay, so he got to there basically. So once again, you got to the backbone. So this part of the fillet here is almost removed. Well, we won't do that just yet. So what I do from here again, spin him round, do exactly the same thing on the other side. So leave that fillet on, all but filleted, but it's still still connected to the fish. That maintains the round of this fish, um, keeps the shape to it, Which makes this fillet as easier to do. Going back to the tail, cutting down, following the backbone along, all the way to the end, clean that scales off. Okay, so here we are again at the same point. So that way you just work on your blade. You can hear hear the knife going along the bones here. but this one I do it a little bit different so from here I just keep following following the boat bones down around his ribs there we go okay that's one pretty neat and then this one because you've almost almost done him the first time Basically, just exactly the same thing. These red bones can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to it. There we go, once we get past that first one. It's on a slippery table. It's a little bit difficult here because the table's slippery and on an angle because my driveway. There we go. Two nice fillets. Bones looking pretty clean. Okay, and like I said, I like to keep the belly. Now, anyone 
for anyone not keeping their bellies out of their fish, no matter what they are, they're crazy. Because this belly meat is something to behold, and it's very simple. Simple slice to cut out. So, underneath these little fins there. There you go. And back down to the tail. Now that piece of meat there is amazing to eat. So I usually, if I get a couple, I keep them so you get a couple at once. But same, you can just skin those scales off there. And uh, that's a beautiful piece of meat. I also go to the point where I'll, I'll cut the wings out of this fella as well. And um, eat the wings too. Kelly's requested me to keep the head. So I'll take his head off and, and use that. Um, so not much gets wasted out of this whole fish. We're eating fillets, belly, wings, head. Um, I used to take the livers out of the fish when we're up in the Gulf. There's a liver there. So I used to take the livers out. And um, it's something that you can do with most fish. I'm just doing this real rough while I've got you here. But um that's one liver, the other one's the same on the other side. That is no different to eating um, chicken liver pate. So Kelly makes a makes a pate out of those out of those livers and uh, yeah, it's to die for. So you can use the whole fish and not, not waste any. If you want to then keep the frame, keep the frame for crab bait. So no wastage. Okay, so now we've got our nice fillets all done. We'll just um, just skin them, take the skin off them. Some people like to leave the scale them, leave the skin, the crispy skin. That's all good. We do a bit of that as well, but I'll just show you how to skin them. So just starting back at the tail, um, you're just cutting down till you hit that skin. And what I like to do, once I get to a point I can grab hold of, I'm, I'm actually moving the, the fillet, keeping the knife in the one place and just moving the fillet back and forth to cut through the skin. Okay, so sometimes if the knife's not big enough, you just have to make a little cut. But you can see I've angled the knife slightly downwards. So I just follow the skin along, hold the knife in the one spot, move the skin. Oh, there we go. Clean him up a bit. Now because the way I filleted it, we cut around most of all those rib bones, so there's no rib bones in there. The only place you might find a bone, which at the moment there's none because I managed to get out of those ones too, there's just a couple of bones up, up in the shoulder here or up in the, um, the top of the ribs, um, but that guy doesn't have any in it. So that's pretty much one big solid piece of boneless meat that you can do whatever you like with. Um, slicing them up to eat, um, because they're because it's a thick fillet and you don't want to cook a big thick piece like that so what I like to do try and just do shallow cuts so this is a little bit tricky takes a bit to get used to but there you go see how you try and maintain the same thickness that way it's all an even thickness fish will cook through evenly and you won't have any dry pieces or dry or overcooked bits and undercooked bits and that there you can do what you like with it but it's hard to hard not to just crumb them and eat them crumbed there we go a little bit of a spare piece. So if you look at that, out of one side you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces out of one out of one fillet. Now realistically you're only going to have two pieces each. So you know you can get a couple of feeds out of just the one the one fillet. So fish that size, two fillets, yeah you got um got plenty of food. Okay so we got our cut up pieces of fill it there in a bag, just got a Ziploc bag here, I'll just show you a neat little trick for when you put them in Ziplocs, so just get your bucket of water, a little bit of water, um, Ziploc your bag up so it's mostly closed, just, a, just the corners just open, as you can see there, put them in the bag, bag in the water, 
and what's happened here just slowly follow that down until you get to that corner and all the air comes out once you get it there zip him up and look at that there you go you've got a cryback bag of fish so the poor man's crybacker.